The Honourable Member for Montcalm. Mr. Speaker, coronavirus is spreading everywhere in Asia, Europe, in North America, and the government must be ready to face a global crisis. It's good. They've established a crisis unit. But we have to piece together bits of information from here and there to obtain a global picture. Will this government show some transparency and avail its full contingency plan once and for all? I appreciate the member's question. As uh, the member knows, we've been working on this issue since Dr. Tam identified the very small cluster in Wuhan late December. We've been working with all members in this House, offering briefings as, uh, as they're available. We'll continue to make ourselves available so that they can understand the rapidly changing situation with COVID-19. I will reassure the member that we are also working at all levels with provinces, territories, and other jurisdictions, including the local public health unit level, to make sure that our systems are prepared, that we know what we need, and that we can handle any that may face us. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Montcalm. Mr. Speaker, the coronavirus is spreading more and more. And the term pandemic, which seemed premature just a few days ago, is now becoming the appropriate term. Imagine, Mr. Speaker, we're talking about an increase of 19,000 percent of cases in Europe in just a few weeks. To reassure Canadians, it takes leadership from the Prime Minister. It takes transparency. It takes an action plan. After how many cases will we finally see the contingency plan? The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And as the member knows, we've been working on this since we first identified those small clusters of um, uh, atypical pneumonia in Wuhan in late December. As the member opposite notes, uh, we have formed a special committee on COVID-19 to make sure that we are fully appraised of the whole of government approach. We have scenario planning that's underway so that we can understand how it will impact the various different components that, uh, as we can see around the world, are being impacted by disruption. Mr. Speaker, the health and safety of Canadians Canadians is of top priority for us, and we will do everything in our power to keep them that uh, safe and well. Thank you very much. The Honourable Member for Richemont, Arthabasca. Mr. Speaker, several countries are starting to describe COVID-19 as a global pandemic. Right now, most developed countries have already taken measures for travellers. But here in Canada, there are no restrictions or controls in place for those entering the country. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Public Safety. Does he plan to restrict travellers um, from China, Iran or Italy from entering Canada? The Honourable Minister of Health. And that question indicates that more briefing is required for that member to let him know, in fact, exactly what is happening at the borders. In fact, we have been carefully screening uh, travellers from a variety of countries based on expert advice from the World Health Organization and many other medical professionals that indicate to us the best effort is to assure that we are asking travellers at the, at, the, at the border to identify themselves if they've travelled from specific regions. There are special questions on the kiosk, Mr. Speaker. Uh, if that a traveler is unwell, Mr. Speaker, they are referred to public health and the local public health authorities. The member should uh, apprise himself of the measures that are... Well, member for Edmonton Riverbend. Hospitals across the country have been warning this government that there's a shortage of masks, protective equipment and beds. However, according to the minister's health officials, the health system is well prepared to deal with the growing number of COVID-19 cases in Canada. Now, finally, six weeks after the confirmed case in Canada, and now, just after the first death in British Columbia, the Prime Minister has asked provinces for their state of readiness. Why is the Minister saying the government is well prepared when she's only asking provinces for their state of readiness today? The Honourable Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, and I must say it is deeply saddening to hear the news out of British Columbia where we have heard that our first patient of coronavirus has passed away in Canada, and I know that we all send our condolences to the family. I will say, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister's letter follows the one that I sent to my counterparts not long ago, also requesting that they put into on paper exactly where they think they are going to have shortages. We have received several responses from provinces and territories in terms of what kinds of needs they might have. We're working very closely with them to make sure that we can provide them with the resources Resources, whether it is equipment, whether it is a financial resources, and we will be there for provinces and territories, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Edmonton Riverbend.
COVID-19 pandemic is a Canadian issue. We know that almost all confirmed cases have been from those entering Canada from high-risk areas, yet this government continues to claim that the problem is not at our borders. Is the minister prepared to enforce the Quarantine Act and issue measures such as mandatory quarantine from those entering from high-risk areas? encourage the member opposite to review the Quarantine Act and he will see that in fact we've been using it extensively when we ask people to self-isolate from affected regions for 14 days and it requires a mandatory check-in with public health which then actually continues, continues to actually uh, confirm that that person is complying with the self-isolation practices that are necessary. Mr. Speaker, we know that this virus knows no borders. We are very uh, aware and alive to the supports that we need to provide at the local level so they can continue their excellent work in containing this, uh, this illness and mitigating uh, uh, the effect on Canadians. Thank you very much. Honourable Member for Vancouver Kingsway. Mr. Speaker, this government assured Canadians our health system is well prepared to deal with the COVID-19 outbreak. But Healthcare Can, the advocacy group for Canada's hospitals, is warning our system is stretched too thin with dangerous shortages of critical care beds and protective equipment. They're calling for increased federal funding and much more testing. Today, we heard... The first death from the virus in BC was confirmed, and we know things will get worse before they get better. Will the Liberals ensure hospitals have the resources they need to respond to COVID-19? Mm -hmm. The Minister of Health. Is yes. That's the work that we're conducting right now with provinces and territories to make sure that they have the capacity should they see a surge of illness in their in their communities that require increased hospitalization. Thank you. The Honourable Member.